I'm White with Action VFX. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can Hulk out and set a carpet on fire for 5 credits or less. This effect is inspired by these shots from the new movie Captain America Brave New World. You want me? Come and get me! Captain America Brave New World. Our first step is going to be to open our footage in After Effects. As you can see, I have an edited sequence of me pretending to Hulk out. It's very goofy, but let's make it a little cooler. We're going to duplicate our base layer, and then with the Roto Brush tool selected, select just portions of our skin. Scrub through, making adjustments to the mask as needed. Once you're happy, press freeze. Duplicate the Rotoscope layer, and title the top one Red Skin, and the lower one Rotoed Skin. Now with the Red Skin layer, we're going to go up to Effect, Color, and add a tint effect. We're then gonna map both the white and black to a red color. Then we'll set that layer's blending mode to color. To adjust this further, we're gonna go up to effect, color correction, and hit exposure. We're gonna bring that down to bring back some detail in the highlights. Then we're gonna go up to effect, blur and sharpen, and add a fast box blur. I turn this up just to soften the edges of the mask a bit more. Now with the rotoed skin layer, we're going to go up to Effect, Color Correction, and add a Levels effect, and then a Brightness and Contrast. By adjusting the RGB slider on the levels and bringing up the Brightness and Contrast, we're able to enhance the red color of the skin. Then, select both your red skin layer and your rotoed skin layer, and hit T to bring up Opacity options. You can slide this down to dial in how red you want your skin to look. And by clicking the stopwatch, we can keyframe it to increase over the duration of the clip so that our skin color gradually changes. Then right click your end keyframes and add Easy Ease. By the way, a lot of these tips are very dependent on your footage and how it was lit, so apply all these tips as you see fit. Then we duplicate our base footage, bring it to the top, and using the pen tool, mask our eyes back in. Make sure your mask is set to add so it's bringing back in the selected areas and then hit M on your keyboard to bring up mask options. Click the stopwatch to add a keyframe, and then scrubbing through your footage, adjust the mask to continuously follow your eyes. Press F to bring up the feather options, and then set that to 25. Repeat this process for the other eye, then it's time to add the red iris. We're gonna drop on over to actionvfx.com and grab our eye textures, which are featured in our ever-expanding Essentials catalog. Pick whichever iris suits the look you're going for, and since we're doing Red Hulk, this one seems right up our alley. Bring it into your project and scale and reposition over the iris and set the blend mode to overlay. Then, to track it in, we need to go up to Layer and create a new null object. Title this corresponding to whichever eye you're doing first. Then, with your base footage selected, Go up to Animation and select Track and Boris FX Mocha. Open Boris and then using the pen tool, select just the eye you want to track. Analyze your whole clip and make sure to save. Head back into After Effects and select Apply Track Data. Make sure this is set to Corner Pin Supporting Motion Blur. Set your target to your Eye Track Null object and hit Apply. Now you can pick Whip your parent and link for the iris layer to the track and your eye is connected. Make sure to enable Motion Blur and then again, keyframe the opacity to gradually increase. You can also go to Effects and Presets and add a glow effect. You'll need to play around with the settings, but you can make the iris a little bit more vibrant. Repeat the same steps for the other eye, and that completes the initial base effect. Hold on. Do you guys hear that? Wait for it. I just dropped in to tell you all about the new updates at Action VFX that you're gonna wanna know. First up, we've just made getting assets far more flexible. Now you can grab custom credit packs, meaning you can buy what you need when you need it. At the launch of subscription, we heard your requests for this and now we are delivering. Next up, the Essentials Catalog just got a massive boost. It's now over 3,000 credit-free assets. It doesn't just stop there because on the first of every month, we're adding in new ones. That means that there's even more VFX firepower at your fingertips, which is pretty cool. And if you're not after credits, our new Essentials plan gives you full access to the catalog on its own. Reliable, high-quality footage all in one place, ready to use without worry. Bottom line, more options, more flexibility, and more firepower for your projects. So be sure to check it out. Links are below and on with the video. Ah, oh, my knees! <laughs>
That's gonna hurt tomorrow. Now, in the following shot, we need to not only make our hands grow, but have it smash into the ground, incinerating the carpet like what's featured in the trailer. So let's just repeat our steps from before. Boom, perfect. Now, since we only show skin here, our rotoed layer scale can be adjusted to make them grow. Press S on your keyboard and then click the stopwatch and gradually keyframe the scale to increase over the course of the shot. But hold up, we can see the original hand behind it. How do we fix this? Go to the first frame before our hand dips in, and on the base layer, right click, hit time, and select freeze frame. Now we have a clean plate under our rotoed layer for the entire shot. Our next step is having the ground crack on the slam. We're gonna spend our first credit on Ground Crack 1B from our Ground Cracks Volume 1 collection, available over at actionvfx.com. Once we have that dragged in, set the blend mode to overlay. Then we'll scale in position, and then we'll right click and enable it as a 3D object. We can then hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation options. Adjust this to line up better with the orientation of the carpet, and now right click your ground crack and pre-compose it, and double click it to open it. Inside you're going to want to go up to layer, new, and add a new adjustment layer, and then go up to effect, blur and sharpen, and add a camera lens blur. I set this to 31 to match the out of focus portion at the bottom of the shot, and using the mask tool drew out just the bottom portion, and then use the feather tool to have it gradually blend down. Back in our main comp, the crack layer cuts off before the end of the clip. We're gonna right click, go up to time, and select freeze on last frame. Now we're gonna drop another credit on Burning Steel Ignition 2 from our Burning Steel Wool Collection. This will need to be set to screen to remove the black background. And just how we adjusted the orientation and placed the crack, we're gonna throw in one of these under each finger. Then pre-comp all these, rename it to Burning Wool Pre-Comp, Make sure that's set to screen as well, and then inside add your depth of field. We can right click, go up to time, enable time remapping, and with a keyframe at the start and end, adjust the speed of the outward burn so it matches the fingers better. Then we're gonna add a glow effect to this, and again, adjust to whatever fits your scene to add a nice illumination to it. Next, go up to layer and add a new solid. Make it black, set it under your steel wool layer, and use the pen tool to mask out a shape similar to the burning wool. Feather it out, and then using the drop down arrow on the mask effect, keyframe the mask expansion so that it stays aligned with the steel wool as it grows through the shot. Then set the blend mode to overlay. One problem I'm noticing is that the shadow from my hand is growing over the burning wool. So I'm gonna duplicate my wool pre-comp, bring it above the rotoscope layers of my hand, create a new black solid, and throw it on top of that. This black solid is gonna be used as a track mat to bring back in just the portion of the sparks we want. We're gonna turn off visibility on the solid so we can see, and then using the pen tool, mask in just the shadowed portions where we wanna see sparks again. Hit M to bring up the mask path options and keyframe it to follow along with the growth of the hand. Then feather it out to 20. Turn back on visibility and then drag the pick whip for the track mat of the shadowed wool layer to the black solid. If it's not displaying the mask correctly, you can click these two buttons to change the settings until it's properly using the mat. Now we're going to pull a dust wave asset from our free dust waves collection. We bring this in, set the blending mode to screen, scale and reposition, and then I brought the opacity down to 18 and using time remapping, adjusted the speed to be a bit quicker, matching the velocity of the impact. And now to drop another credit. We're going to buy the Sparks Landing 13 asset from our Electrical Sparks Volume 1 collection. We're going to bring that in, scale and reposition, and we're also going to trim it to just be the burst of sparks that we want for the impact. Repeat the same process, pre-comping it and adding in your depth of field, and then back in our main comp, we're going to mask out our middle finger and set the mask to subtract, and set the feather to 25. Then I'm going to keyframe the mask expansion to decrease over the next several frames. This helps the sparks blend into the scene and appear as though they come from the inside of my hand and burst their way out. Then we're going to take a copy of our sparks layer and put it in our shadowed steel wool pre-comp so sparks land in the shadow of the hand as well. Now go up to layer and create a new adjustment layer. And while we're going to use the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot, you can achieve the same effect with turbulent displacement. The settings again vary greatly on how your shot is set up and what your personal preference is, so I encourage you to play around with it. Then mask out just around the portion of the frame you want the heat distortion showing and crank up the feather. I also keyframe the distortion amount to be at zero before the hand enters and increase as it slams into the floor. 
You can take the depth of field trick that we learned and also add it to your rotoed hand layer to help the fingers go out of focus as they grow. The last credit I want to spend is on a large Steam 3 asset from our Rising Steam collection. I bring this in, set to screen, scale and reposition, and then trim it to appear on the moment of impact. I then added a levels effect and adjusted the RGB slider to make the steam less bright. Next, I brought down the opacity, then I keyframed it to become slightly more visible over the duration of the shot. This is then set behind the roto layer, and if you needed to, you could add a camera lens blur or a fast box blur to help match the depth of field. Then by stacking layers like this in front of the roto layer, behind the roto layer, and adjusting the blur accordingly, you can build more of an atmosphere. And if you have a few credits to spare, you could use this technique to layer in some embers, more sparks, and even air particles. Then you can recycle a lot of those assets and layer an atmosphere in other shots. You can pick up items like that from our air particles collection, our fire embers collection, and our fire sparks collection. When a shot's finished, you can pre-compose it, scale it up, and hit P to bring up position options. Hit the stopwatch to enable keyframes, and then you can add some subtle camera movements and shakes throughout the shot. Highlight your keyframes, right click, and add easy ease. Then make sure motion blur is turned on. Add in your sound effects and you're good to go. And just like that, we're finished. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what tutorial you'd love to see next. And don't forget to visit actionvfx.com where you can access our free practice footage library packed with cinematic shots to help you hone your skills. Make sure to visit us on social media so you never miss a new video drop or product release. So what are you waiting for? Start creating and I'll see you on the next one.